Hi and welcome to another in the over the shoulder series of tutorials for Solaris 11. In this tutorial we're going to go through two separate things that are somewhat connected. We're going to go through the ease at which uh, the ease of installing and creating an iPackage zone now. You could think when you think when you hear iPackage you could think native zone and uh, once we go through that we're then also going to show the capabilities that uh, iPackage zones have now. So similar to the global zone that has um, boot environments, uh, which we use BEADM to interact with, the iPackage zones now have the same capability so that the zone can have multiple instances of the installation on it so that you can use it for multiple different reasons. So we'll start the process by creating a directory for our new zone. Uh, we'll call it um, right package z3. Now, before we go, we'll just have a quick look at the state of the, uh, the zones on this system. So we'll see that there's already uh, a bit of activity in the zone space here already. So we have the global zone, the, the main system. We have an S10 branded zone, which we created earlier. We also have an existing uh, iPackage zone on the system. So we're now going to create another iPackage zone and uh, configure it, install it, boot it, log into it, and then create a new build boot environment, a ZFS boot environment for it. So the first thing we're going to do now is to use zone CFG to create. As normal, it's, it knows it doesn't exist yet. We're just going to issue the create command uh, so that it uses the standard template from the system, so SYS default. That template has a lot of defaults in it which make the creation very, very straightforward. I actually only need to give it one piece of information and that's the zone path, but I'm going to give it just an extra piece as well. So I'm going to set the zone path to the directory that we created a second ago. And I'm also going to set it to auto boot. And verify. Seems okay. Just do a check in the info. So we'll see that there's quite a number of uh, parameters not set. We don't need to worry about that. One of the things that is interesting is that the IP type is actually set as exclusive. This is allowable because in creating an iPackage zone, the system creates a VNIC for that zone so that it is exclusive uh, for that VNIC. So all we have to do now is to issue an install command. Just have a quick look to make sure that the zone is configured. Oh, sorry, we haven't finished zone config, so we'll do a commit, do an exit, and just make sure everything is the way we think it should be. We have the new zone, which is configured, it has a zone path, it's a native iPackage zone, and it's an exclusive, it's using IP exclusive. So we're now going to issue a zone ADM install command. I'm going to have to give very, very little information because what it's going to do is use the AI um, definitions from what the global zone uses. So AI is the automatic installer, which we will talk about in another tutorial later and it's going to control everything from creating the plan, refreshing the catalogs, and getting the install started and finished. So the last thing I forgot to do is actually tell it what I want to do, and that's obviously install. It's creating the file system, it's logging everything that's happening, and it's starting the installation straight away. It's going to refresh the catalog, then going to make sure that I can see all the repositories that it needs to see. This should take in and around five minutes. So while it's doing its thing, I'm just going to pause the capture, and when we get some more interesting, I'll put out resume. Just an interesting point now to resume the capture for a couple of seconds. So the plan is being created, and now we're downloading all the packages that we need to install the local iPackage zone. So this is a very fast process. 
depending of course on your on your network and where the repositories reside in comparison to your system. So we we'll just pause again, we'll be finished very shortly and then we we'll resume. So we're all finished and as far as the installation process thinks it only took 223 seconds. So it's given us even a few steps to finish out what we want to do here. So we obviously have to boot the zone and then we're going to log into the zone. So just before we do that, we make sure that the state of things is what we would expect. So we have the new zone Z3, Clonicility Z3 is installed, uh, but it's not running yet. So we're going to do zone EDM. We're going to boot it. So again, go back and have a look at the state, so we see that everything's running. So we're now going to just go on a quickly log on to the system. Uh, before we do, we just check and see what we think the global zone is installed with. And we're going to then verify that this is the exact same as what we have on the new zone that we just installed. Here we are on the zone straight away. So uh, one of the things that we uh, said at this outset of this tutorial is that we wanted to investigate the availability of ZFS boot environments on the actual local zones now. So we have access to the command BEADM. We can see what environments already exist there. So we have the, the standard default Solaris boot environment. So we're just going to do a quick create. go. We're now going to activate it. So we see now that the flag R has been set for test 1 which means it's going to be active on reboot. So we're just going to issue a reboot. It's going to kick us off the system back onto the global zone. We'll track the status of the zone coming back up and we'll see then when we log back into it that we will have booted into the new boot environment. So it's already back up and running, which is why we set the auto boot to be equal to be true when we were doing the CF zone config earlier. And it's already back up. So if we do a BEADM list, we see now that we're, we're into the new boot environment that we created only a minute ago. So I hope that gives a uh, demonstration of how straightforward it is now to create a local zone, how straightforward the inst installation process is, and now how useful it is to be able to create uh, ZFS boot environments on the local zone in order to be able to utilize those zones in even a greater uh, capacity. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you get to view a few more of these in the future. Thank you. Goodbye.